Hey guys, welcome back to Extreme IE. In this video, we are going to talk about layer two switches. But before I do that, I need to explain what a switch is in general. So let me just take a couple minutes to explain that before I jump into the differences between a layer two switch. And then in the next video, we'll, we'll it'll be a little bit shorter because we'll talk about a layer three switch. So what is a switch? Let's imagine here for a minute that we have a number of different devices that are connected on our network. We have a desktop, laptop. Uh, let's say we have a printer. And let's just say because we want more than just three devices, let's also say that we have an IP camera. So security is big in our organization. We want to make sure we monitor people not stealing printer paper. Well, who cares? Anyway, so generally today you can have all of these devices connected via wireless, right? So you really don't need a lot of uh, a lot of ports in your in your network. But for the for the sake of this conversation and what is a switch, let's imagine that wireless doesn't exist. So we need a physical something to be able to connect these devices into so that they can share data with one another. My desktop, my laptop, they need to print. We want to be able to monitor that IP camera to make sure nobody's stealing stuff from us, but we need to be able to get to that remotely through the network. And that's exactly what a switch does for us. A switch provides us with port density, I'll write that in a minute, it provides us with port density in order to be able to plug all of these different devices into our network. You can buy anywhere from a four to a 48 port switch and, and plug that many devices in. Uh, the four port switches are generally going to be kind of your cheaper kind, like Netgear, things like that. Your 48 port switches, you can still buy a Netgear switch, but again, that allows your, your 24 ports and your 48 ports. And then you're starting to get into your higher end switches, you know, Meraki switches. Um, again, you can still get a Netgear switch, but generally you're going to find Meraki, uh, you know, Cisco, Arista, all of those big name brands are going to sell generally 24 to 48 port switches. Uh, maybe sometimes less, but anyway, um, where you can plug all of these things into. Now, I know what you're probably thinking. You're like, wow, you know, 48 ports. I have, you know, 200 devices on my network. How would I do that? Well, you can do a number of different things. Um, and this will be a little bit more clear when we talk about network topologies and kind of what's plugged into what. But there's a number of things that you can do with a switch. With a switch, you can buy a 48 port switch, and when that 48 ports, when those 48 ports run out, when you fill it up, you can buy a second 48 port switch. This is this is big, especially in the Cisco 3800 series, um, and you can stack them together. So in the back of the switch, there's a a connector port, and you would take a stack cable and you would plug it into the back of the switch, and then those two switches essentially act as one. So you've now doubled the amount of ports that you have on the network, and you can stack. I can't remember exactly how many you can stack. I think it's three or four but just for now, we'll just stack three of them so you get the idea. And they'll stack together in such a way that they essentially become redundant. Now, if you lose one switch, okay, you know, that, that stinks, but the other two are still going to continue to operate. They also have modular chassis where they're giant switches that weigh, you know, 500, 800 pounds. They take up half a rack, but they're empty switches. They don't have any ports at all. And what you would do is you would buy these line cards. It's essentially like a 48 port switch without all the metal, you know, encasing around it. And you would slide it into the modular switch. And so you can buy a number of these different line cards and you can just load this switch up with 48 port line cards and you can have one switch that just has a massive amount of ports. And it's not just these devices that you're going to connect into a switch. A lot of times you're going to connect in your access points, you're going to connect in your firewalls, you're going to connect in your routers. Typically speaking, your switching infrastructure, your, the switching part of your network is going to be the core of your network because the switch's goal is to send and receive traffic at lightning speed. It's to, it's to collect the data that you're trying to send and send it out to where it needs to go as quick as humanly possible. We're talking about milliseconds. We're talking about light speed here. It's trying to send it as fast as possible. Now, the, the switch itself, the function of a switch, I want you to think of as if it's a traffic light. What do I mean by that? Well, there are switches and then there are hubs. Hubs do not act like a traffic light. Let me, let me give you an analogy here so that you understand what I'm saying. Let's imagine a four-way intersection. And let's imagine that in this four-way intersection, we have a number of moving trucks. I'll get to why moving trucks in a second. So we have a number of moving trucks and they're all looking to get to a destination. Well, these moving trucks are going to represent packets. Well, what's a packet, JP? A packet is a moving truck full of data being sent from your desktop. You, need, you have a number of things that you need to print. And you say, okay, I have this Word document, file, print. What your desktop or laptop or tablet, what it does is it takes that Word document, it packs it up into a moving truck, and it sends that moving truck to the printer. When it gets to the printer, that moving truck gets unpacked by the printer. The printer says, okay, here's the Word documents that are contained into that moving truck, and I need to 
make this into a piece of paper, put the data on the paper so that the person can take it, the piece of paper with the data. Um, so a packet is a moving truck filled with data that your machine is going to send or any, any device on the network is going to send for somebody else to unpack and read through it. Imagine if this intersection, all these moving trucks are all trying to get to their destination all at the same time. They're not paying attention. They don't care about what, what's in front of them, what's next to them. They just care about getting to their destination and there's no traffic light at this intersection. What would happen? All of these moving trucks would essentially crash into each other and you would have a collision. That's what we would call it in real life. Well, we call it the same thing in a network. This is called a network collision. When, when two packets, two moving trucks crash into each other on a network, that's called a collision. And then what needs to happen is, since your data, since your moving truck never got to its destination, your laptop, desktop, tablet needs to get another moving truck, needs to pack it with the same Word document, and send it on its way again. This would be called a retransmit. And so a hub, this is exactly what would happen in, a, in, a, in an environment with just hubs, because hubs don't care who sends data, who receives data. A hub is just a set of ports for you to plug stuff into. Whereas a switch is a traffic light. A switch actually looks at the amount of data that's being sent, it looks at who it's going to and when, and it says, okay, JP's desktop, give it a second. Student's laptop is trying to print, and so just wait a half a millisecond for that job to finish, for that moving truck to go on its way. Then you can get a green light, you can send your moving truck, and then it looks at the printer and says, oh, you need a green light because you're sending data here, and it's doing this at light speed. It's doing this incredibly fast, faster than the human brain to even comprehend. So, you know, I know what you're thinking. You're like, oh, well, that, that sounds slow. No, it's doing this incredibly fast. It's doing this at light speed. This is exactly what a switch does. It's a giant traffic light. So what about a layer two switch? What exactly is a layer two switch? Well, number one, a layer two switch is generally gonna be a lot cheaper than a layer three switch because it doesn't have the amount of features that a layer three switch does. Now a layer two switch and layer three switch, the reason why we call them layers is because they operate at that layer in the OSI model. Now we're not gonna go into the OSI model in this course. You know, you can go, you can spend 10 minutes reading about it and, and easily understand. But a layer two switch, the, the job of a layer two switch is to dynamically learn all of the MAC addresses of the devices that are connected to it. What's well, a MAC address? Let me just quickly bring in my terminal here really quick. This is just a command prompt on my desktop. We're going to say IP config all. And let me scroll up here and let me find the MAC address. This is the layer two or the hardware address of my desktop. This is the physical address that is hard coded into the network adapter, the physical network adapter on the back of my desktop. Laptops have the same thing. Anytime there is a, de a device with a wireless card or a physical network adapter, it is going to have a, a layer two hardware physical address that is connected to it. So a switch will, will learn all of these physical hardware addresses that are connected to it, and it will contain two different tables to say, okay, this is the IP address to the MAC address, and then this MAC address is on this port. Let me bring in a, another terminal here to a switch, and I'll show you exactly what I mean. So let me log into a switch here really quick, and we're going to say show IP ARP. I think that's the command. i got to learn how to spell. So here, what you're seeing is on this particular switch, there is a group of MAC addresses. These are all of the hardware addresses of the things that are connected and their IP address. So when your desktop goes to send a print job to a printer and it says, okay, I need to send this job to address, you know, 192.168.1. When that, when that packet, when that moving truck gets to the traffic light, which is the switch, it says, hey, I, I need to know where this IP address is. And the switch is, oh, okay, well, this IP address maps back to this physical hardware address. Well, where is that physical hardware address? Show MAC address table. And what the switch will then do is say, okay, well, that physical address, for example, is on you know this port or this port. And so that's essentially the nature of a layer two switch. A layer two switch wants to act as a very, very incredibly fast traffic light to send and receive data, make sure that your traffic gets to where it's going without having a collision. It wants to maintain a table of IP addresses that are connected to it. It wants to maintain a, a, a corresponding mapping to the physical addresses that are connected to it. And then it wants to 
contain, and that's called the ARP table, by the way. You saw the command show IP ARP, address resolution protocol. And so it also wants to create a, another table that says, okay, now that I know the IP address to the physical layer two address, I need to maintain another table called the MAC address table or commonly known as the CAM table. And I need to make sure that I have a physical address to the port so that I know what port on the switch to send that data. So I hope this video wasn't confusing. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll talk more about this in the layer three video. See you guys there.